Hey friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Kenzie Sexton and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Dakota. Today for Tech Tip Tuesday, I'm going to be showing you around Kahoot. So let's get started. One really cool thing about Kahoot is that you don't always have to make your own you can quickly go and find another one that somebody else has made. So I'm going to show you how to find those cahoots because there are times where uh, maybe you just had a really busy day or you need a time filler or you have found this extra time and you want to use it to review a skill with your class. Kahoot is an excellent way to do that. To find a cahoot, you will go up to the Discover tab and click on that. And then where it says find me a Kahoot, you're going to type in the topic that you are looking for. They also have top picks. They also have other categories like US civics, global solidarity, all different types of topics. Let's say that I want to practice multiplication Oops. with my students. I'm gonna just type in multiplication and search that and then you'll see all these different cahoots come up off to the side you can see how many times people have played these cahoots to see kind of the popularity of them you can also see an example question at the bottom so what will the questions be like that are in this cahoot and then on the page you can see the total number of questions in that cahoot that normally makes a big difference for me just depending on what kind of time we have so that I can finish it so I'm looking for multiplication problems like this, four times five. So I'm going to click on it to see what the other questions are. I'll just scan it real quick. I'm seeing that all the questions look the same way. So that looks good. Now, if this is something that maybe I wanna do at a later time, but I don't wanna do right now, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to use this in class tomorrow. I can star it, favorite the Kahoot, and then it will be saved to my folder so I can pull it up at a later time. Now, if I'm ready to play this with my students, then I would simply click play. And if we're doing it in class, then I'm going to click on teach. So then when on my screen, what comes up is the login for the Kahoot. So you can have it be classic where each student is playing on their own or you can play it teams where you have the students in groups and they're competing together. So I'm going to go ahead, most of the time I click classic, but I also wanna show you down here, there is music that plays with it and sometimes it, uh, can be really loud and sometimes you want something different. So they do have different options of the music that you can play and you can see what they all sound like before. You can also go through and you can have the question, the order of the questions randomized, shuffled. Um, the answers can be shuffled as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on classic and it will come up on the teacher's screen. So this is what you will have projected on your smart board. So the students will see this, that the code is 9556784. So for them to log in and play this game, they would type in that code, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay, so here I'm going to be flipping through two screens to show you both what the student screen will look like and what the projector will look like, what you're sharing with your students. So this is the teacher screen. This is the screen that's on your smart board that the students can see when logging in. This is the screen that your students will see to log in. So the difference of it is the website that they're going to. So to, pull, or to log in as a teacher account, and start games, you're going to Kahoot.com. To play the game, students are going to Kahoot.it. So this is on Kahoot.it. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to type in this code here, or the student's gonna type in that code to the game pin. That gets them into that specific game that we have started. Okay, now when it asks for their nickname, I highly recommend having them use their actual name. If you have students with the same names, add the last, or their first initial of their last name. That helps you to be able to go through that data afterwards and see which students need help and identify the students that are doing well with it, different questions that some students need to review. So I'm just going to use the same name I used last time, Ashley A, and I'm going to click OK Go. So then for the student, they see your in, see your nickname on the screen. Then if you look on the teacher's page or the page that's on the projector overhead, you see that their name is there. Now, if you see when I hover over the name, a line goes through it. If I click on the name, it will delete the name. So if a student tries to put in an inappropriate name or something that you don't want in there, they didn't use it correctly, um, they didn't use capitalization, something like that, you can go ahead and just delete it and it will kick them out and have them sign in again. Once you are ready, well, first you can see the number of players in this corner. You can see that the music is here. You can adjust the volume. You can change the music. You can adjust to a full screen. Once you're ready to go, you'll click Start. Your screen will be showing the questions. So on your screen, it'll say this is the first of 20 questions. It's four times five. So the students will see this and say, okay, four times five, that equals 20. So they're gonna look through their options and they're going to see the blue diamond is 20 and on their screen, oops, wow, that didn't give me very long. <laughs> I'll show you on the next one. So we'll just go next because no one answered so it wasn't ready. I'll go a little quicker. So three times eight, 24. Oops, so you have to see 24 is the yellow circle. I'm going to click on the yellow circle and it will show that I got it correct. It will show that I've gotten one correct in a row and it will add my points. And I'm on the podium, but I am the only student playing. <laughs> and the game will continue like that. So the students are looking at the main screen to see the question that they have to answer and then they're looking at their options of their answers to figure out which color or which shape they're going to click on. One of the things that I'd like to show you is the report section on Kahoot. The reports section is at the top of the page, about in the middle of the screen. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the previous games that you've had students play. So on here, you can see that I've had one game played. Um, I actually just did that real quick just to show you what it looks like. So if I want to see the report from this Kahoot, I will go ahead and go over here and click open. And then the report for that Kahoot comes up. So at the top it tells you what the title of the Kahoot was. So it was the Midwest region. So all questions about the Midwest region. Off to the side over here it tells you the date and time that that Kahoot was played and then who hosted it. So that was my account. Then it tells you here, we're under the summary tab, so we can see how many questions or what percentage of the questions were answered correct by the group of students that completed this Kahoot. Here there's a quick summary of information. So there is one player, they answered 36 questions and it took th them six minutes to complete the Kahoot. Then over here on the side, you can view the podium. The podium is showed at the end of the game and it shows the students and you pretty much who answered the most questions right and the students that answered the questions correctly the quickest. So if I click on view podium, it shows that my one player got the gold and she answered 34 out of 36 questions correct. Now, if I had other players, it would place them in second for the silver, third for the bronze, and then anyone else would just be left off of the podium after that. I'm going to click to go back. 
Down here at the bottom, you can see the difficult questions, and there's two, and those are actually the two that this player got incorrect. Um, you can click into the difficult questions to see what those questions were, so it will show you the question, it will show you what the student answered, what the correct answer was, so it has all that data there for you. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to the summary. Um, if there was any students that really struggled with the Kahoot, they would be listed under the Need Help section. So after playing this, you would know who maybe needs a little more assistance, um, who needs to be brought in with small groups. Maybe you notify parents to allow them to help their students as well. I do this for either to check for prior knowledge or I do it as a review before a test. If you're doing this for a review before a test, this is a great way to just collect some data quickly. And then off to the side, it also has who didn't finish the, the Kahoot. And then up here at the top, you can click on players and you can see who your players were, uh, what place they got what percentage of the answers they got correct, anything that they did not answer, and then what their final score was. You can also click on questions and see all of the questions with the correct answers, which ones they got correct. And then also students can leave feedback, and I didn't have any on this. So the report section is just a really cool way to get that data. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to create your own Kahoot. So the first thing you could do is just click on the create button at the top here. But I'm going to show you how to go all the way into your Kahoot to see your collection. So if you go to the top and click on Kahoot, this will show you your collection. So the first thing is my Kahoot. You can see that over here. I have not created, created any on this page yet, so there's nothing here. Um, if you click on the favorites tab, that will show anything that you've starred. So we starred that multiplication one to use later. So that's basically just the place that you will keep everything. And then if another teacher or a friend shared one with you, that will show up in the shared with me, but I have not had any yet. So to start my own Kahoot, I'm going to my Kahoots. You'll click on add a Kahoot. And we're going to click on Create New Kahoot. So one of the Kahoots that I do every year is for our Midwest region because we learn about the different regions. So I'm going to first enter my Kahoot title, which is going to be Midwest Region. And then the description just allows someone who's looking at maybe using your Kahoot to see what your Kahoot will cover. So I'm just gonna say this Kahoot covers the state locations, capitals, oops, and abbreviations of the states in the Midwest region. If you'd like a video to be played while students wait, you can add that to your lobby video. I don't really do that very often. You can switch your language here. You can switch visibility. If you don't want anyone else to access your Kahoot, you can switch it to only you. If you're okay with other people using it, you'll leave it on everyone. And the lobby music, you can either pick or you can leave it to Kahoot to choose. So then I'm going to Sometimes I'll add a cover image as well. So the easiest way I've found to do that is to just go to Google and then type in whatever you're doing. So if I'm going to do the Midwest region, I'm just gonna type that in. I'll find an image that covers those. I'll just save the image onto my desktop And then what will happen is when I go to my Kahoot Creator, I can change the image, upload an image, or you can choose one from their image library. I just think it's easier to do this. 
I'll click on Midwest Region Choose, and now when someone's pulling up my Kahoot, this is the image that they will see. So it helps them to identify what's being taught in this lesson. So then I'm going to click Done. Now this is where you start creating your questions. So for a question that I would, would put in my Midwest Region Kahoot would be, which state is shown? Because I want students to be able to identify which state is being shown to them on the map. So now again, because I'm not asking a specific question that they can answer just by hearing the question, I need an image attached. I'm going to upload an image. I actually have already saved this. It is a picture of Iowa on a map. I'm going to click choose. And then... I'm going to add some options. So obviously Iowa is the correct answer. I'm going to also add some other states in the Midwest region. Kansas. And then you also have to choose the correct answer. So Iowa is the correct answer. If it was a question with multiple correct answers, you can choose multiple options. Um, on here as well, you can have it where players only get to choose one answer, or if you want them to choose multiple, you can switch that as well. And you can also adjust the points that the, each question is worth. You can also choose the time limit. So like on the multiplication one, they had a shortened time limit. I typically leave it at 20 seconds. It's long enough for them to look at, think about, and answer. And if you're going to get through all the questions, you'll have to have a relatively short time. Um, and then to add another question, you will add, or you'll click on add question off to the side, and then you can choose which type of question you want. Quiz is the one that we have here. That's the one that I typically use. You can have true or false, open-ended, a puzzle, poll, slides, but the open-ended puzzle, poll, and slides do not come with the free version. You have to upgrade for those. So I would just click on quiz, and then I would type in, again, whatever my next one is. Um, what you're doing, what is the abbreviation for Iowa? And then I would give options. And then I would click on the correct answer again. So that is how you create the Cahoots. You can also add links to YouTube videos instead of images. You can upload your image like we did in the previous one, and you can also choose from their image library that they provide to you as well. And then once you're finished with the Kahoot, all you do is you click done. So one way that I use it to start every school year is just kind of as an introduction to myself and who I am so the students get to know me better. I send home a letter before the school year starts, just explaining a little bit about me. And then on one of the first days of, days of school, I have the students participate in this Kahoot about myself. And it just includes some of the questions that were in that letter home, so I can kind of see who read it. And then they get excited when they actually did take the time to read it and they can answer those questions. Um, and then it's just uh, some other interesting facts about me that the students can connect to me with, like maybe my favorite NFL team, my favorite MLB team, uh, my favorite hobbies, those types of things that students can connect with and really start to bond with you over. So that's one of the ways I use it. Another way I use it, I don't have it here, but at the end of the digital learning school year this past year, I actually did an, a virtual Zoom end of the year party online with my kids and we actually did a Kahoot. So I had the parents all send me a fun fact about their child that they didn't think their other classmates would know was them. And then I included all of those in a Kahoot. So there was one question on the Kahoot that actually the answer was each of the students in my class. And that way the students were able to kind of guess and see and learn a little bit more about their classmates. So that was another really fun way that I use it in my classroom. And then the other way that I use it 
a lot for is to review or teach the regions in the United States. So you can see here that I have one for every region that we learn about and we use that as a way to introduce those regions to the kids and check for their prior knowledge. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would also love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks for watching.